Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sports Scope. I'm your host, Robert Butler, on this 22nd blazing hot day here at in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sure around the country uh, day in America. I tell you, it was really, really humid out today uh, here in this area. And I had a bunch of uh, uh, stops to do and every freaking uh, car uh traffic jam, crowd, you you name it, in my day job. But anyways, I'm going to talk the SEC. We had media days this week. We've got a very, very exciting competitive league. Now, Oklahoma and Texas are submitting paperwork uh, in 2025 to get into the SEC. I'll give you my thoughts there. Also, uh, we, we've got a legend that may be uh, that may may pass on us an unfortunate situation there. Uh, we have a we have a great player, a great American story to uh, talk about in the Giannis antenna, uh, the Giannis story from the Milwaukee Bucks. But first, the internet's going crazy, and I'm going to jump on this story now. Uh, the NFL. The NFL has ha, has made it known before this. Uh, we are some some training camps start Friday. Other training camps will start uh, sometime in the middle of the next week. By this time next week, we should have all. Uh, I know by next Saturday, we have all thirty two teams in training camp, and the NFL. Uh, I'm going to read this statistic here. It says that, let's see, 14 teams have at least 85% vaccinated. All 32 team clubs are above 50% vaccinated for the coronavirus. And, of course, DeAndre Hopkins, well-known star player. Uh, the Internet went wild. I'm sure the sports media on one side or the other is going to go wild. But he's saying – that if they mandate this thing, he's going to retire, basically. He does not want to do that. Uh, he, he, he tweets out uh, that his girlfriend's brother in the military got vaccine and has heart problems right after that. When you stand for something, they hate you, is what uh, Hopkins says. Jalen Ramsey, NFL player. I know two people right now has got the max, got the vaccine but are COVID positive. Just saying. I wouldn't look at a teammate as bad if he... Don't get the vaccine. And I noticed that Colin Cowherd, guy's got a pretty big platform. Him and your Stephen A., I have to quote them from time to time. He put out this tweet, jeopardize a $15 to $20 billion annual business and your choices will be suddenly new rules, not complicated. Uh, that's hinting at making it a mandate. The NFL put out today that, from what the statistics I read, they will not reschedule games if there is a COVID outbreak on a team. You just forfeit the loss. That's the news. They're, you you will not uh, they they will not reschedule games, which is fine. With those numbers I just read to you, I understand that. But now Colin Coward saying jeopardize a fifteen to twenty billion dollar annual business, and your choices will be suddenly become new rules, not complicated. That sounds like a hint at a vaccine mandate for NFL players. Of course, I tweeted back at him and said billions and billions in lawsuits 10 to 20 years from now from potential long-term side effects for mandating 1,700-plus players be vaccinated. And NFL hasn't forgot about the CTE settlement. You know, they don't know. Nobody knows. Long-term side effects, okay? Nobody knows that. DeAndre Hopkins, again, said, my girlfriend's brother's in the military, got the vaccine, now he has heart problems right after it. You know, it, it's just, and you can do whatever you want to. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record. You know, if, 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 I, was, if I was a certain age, uh, or, or, you know, if I had certain health, health problems, diabetes or whatever, at a certain age, yeah, I would get the vaccine. But I'm also reading about these side effects. And I just don't think you need to mandate something like that, you know. And I don't think people need to uh, put guilt trips on these NFL players to do so. 
Leonard Fournette doesn't want to get the vaccine. So, uh, you know, uh, I'd say I talked to my doctor, but these players are seeing this. They have family members to doing whatever. Uh, they are fully aware. You had to be living under a rock. You have to be living under a rock. If you don't know what the consequences are uh, uh, for the NFL and you don't know what the potential health consequences of passing on to your uh, to a, uh, a family member, elderly family member. So, you know, the players are fully aware of that. They are fully aware of that. But I would not mandate and I wouldn't any company for that matter. I don't think this government should do that. But I'm, I didn't put that in my hashtag, folks, because Facebook may kick me off. Twitter may kick me off. YouTube may kick me off. So that's a little bit of stir. I think it's going to blow over. I do not think, my prediction, no games will get canceled because of outbreaks. No games will get canceled. I don't care about this Delta variant. With those kind of numbers, you got 14 clubs at 85%. Plus, that does not count, folks, who has – gotten the, the 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 virus and got over it on their own and ha and have their own uh they've uh, got a uh, developed uh, immunity and herd immunity to it so I think it's okay and and I do not blame for DeAndre Hopkins for saying what he said and I hope he don't uh retire and I hope the uh, NFL won't do that and again with the CTE lawsuit you uh you get some kind of mandate going on with 1700 players and the ones that's already been vaccinated after the before the mandate is going to get in on this class action lawsuit because they're going to say they felt pressured into it, and that will cost NFL billions for years to come. They're not going to do it, and I don't think they should. But also okay with the NFL simply if they're if the if the guys are irresponsible and not social distancing, and something goes down, there's an outbreak, and they feel like they can't flood a team. I don't think that they should reschedule it. The, the other team gets to win. It's a forfeit. I'm okay with that, too, as well. Okay. We had a championship game. Now, guys, I'm going to fly through these other topics because I want to get to the SEC. It's it, big news in the SEC. There's two teams want to get to the SEC. I'm going to break down the SEC, the teams I feel like that are relevant and of, of interest, not the crappy ones. The ones of interest. There are plenty of storylines. Plenty of storylines. But I, I did want to. A lot of people do. Giannis is 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 the American dream story. Giannis is. Um, yeah, well, a lot of uh, that many people die of flu also. So you know, I mean, I can get you some statistics, pickles on people dying of other. Stuff that's not talked about in the media. If you want to go there, trust me, right? you know. But anyways, Giannis is—he's um, a real American dream story. I'll tell you, man. He's a guy that don't know. Um, epitomizes the American dream. When you got guys in the, and I'm telling you, Adam San, Adam Silver is very glad that this happened. He is taking a sign of break. This is a relief for NBA fans. This is a positive story for NBA fans. This particular, uh, there's so much with the uh, LeBron James, uh, with his bad attitude towards the NBA, with, um, what's it got? Kyrie Irving. And his nonchalant attitude towards the NBA. It's good to hear a Giannis be grateful for this country that, that that's going on in this country. That that the the uh, his story about getting to the NBA. Nobody caught this, but this is what the Maria Taylors and the ESPN should cover and dive into. Listen to this. But the way I grew up, we, we had a lot of struggles. We faced a lot of challenges. Uh, eight and a half years ago, like six months before I came to the league, we were trying to figure out where we we're going to get our next meal from. You know, um, I'm, I saw my parents every day sacrifice, uh, work extremely hard uh, to provide for I us. I know it's hard. He's got his uh, got a got a deep, thick accent. Uh, you know, his nickname's the Great Freak. But 13 seconds in there. And a half years ago, like 
six months before I came to the league, we were trying to figure out where we're going to get our next meal. From. Six months before he got into the league, he wanted to find out where he got is going to get his next meal from. And when he won the championship the other day, that was on Tuesday, Wednesday, he's driving in the drive through at Chick fil A with that trophy in his hand and orders like 50 Chick fil A chicken sandwiches and he's live streaming it. Uh, you know, you know um, guys like that, that that are so thankful for that opportunity and that humbleness. And I, I'm hearing some people come around that are in NBA circles finally say that this guy is, you know, the most humble person in the NBA for his start. I mean, he's won two MVPs and now he's won a ring and he did not have super. This was not a air quote, super, super team. And I believe that. I mean, those guys are relatively good stars and solid players on the team around him, but this is not an air quote, super team, you know, and whether, you know, that, we talk about the old twos, the old twos, the old two deficits coming back from Brooklyn. But also you got to look at uh, the other teams that got injured. But the harder you work, the luckier you get, man. My dad used to tell me that, you know. The harder you work, the luckier you get. So they stayed relatively healthy when everybody else did not stay relatively healthy. Uh, you know, Durant's hurt all the time. And I like Durant, but, uh, you know, he's had some injury problems. Irvin's had some injury problems. Harden was out of shape coming into the league. You know, uh, Joel Embiid, I love Joel Embiid, but he's hurt all the time too. I mean, he was really had some injury problems at the beginning of his career. I didn't think he was going to make it this far. So, uh, you know, Phoenix had injury problems at the beginning. At Utah. So, and looking back to the other champions, uh, Golden State had injury problems. Cleveland had those injury problems that helped Golden State get their championship. Golden State, Durant went down. Uh, who was it? Clay Thompson went down. And then uh, Toronto took advantage of that. So, this, it's a paper champion. And I, I don't think so. You know, I think that they, they were prepared. And they did not get injured. It's the first time since uh, 50 years ago. I want to say Kareem was on that other team. Young Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, before this thing even went down, I said this is a win-win. Neither one of these teams have been there since the ABA-NBA merger back in 1976. So it's a, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, guys like him that play both sides of the ball, he you want to make the argument that he's now the best two way player over a, a Austin, often injured now, Kawhi Leonard. You know, he's bringing defense back. This was not a high a shoot three point shooting team, this was a very much a throwbacks type of team. Uh, that, that won this. I'm proud of him. Uh, Travis uh, Pipes from Wisconsin works at a radio station up there. I tried to get him to come on. He said he couldn't come on this late. Wanted to talk Milwaukee basketball, guys. But I've got a lot to do tonight. That's that. Are, that is what I have to say about that. Like um, Forrest Gump would say. Okay. But anyways, okay. SEC Media Days. A uh, lot of big personalities. Uh, you know, now there was multiple sources now are saying this, that in 2025, Big Ten, uh, Big 12 contracts up. Oklahoma and Texas Pickles wants to come to the SEC. Uh, they they want a part of this big brand. Uh, they want to get into SEC country and recruit. 
And of course, yeah, that would kill Big 12. But let, let's think about this for one second. Just take all the logistics out of school robberies with Oklahoma State and all that and Nebraska and Texas and all that stuff. Take all that. Forget about all that for a second. As far as it, and we're talking billions now. And we're also, remember, folks, we're very close in the near future to getting a 12-team playoff, okay? But for you as a fan and for me as a fan, you know and I know that there is a lot of garbage football on TV on Saturday. You watch Marshall versus Arkansas, somebody like that. But when you get a Texas and an Oklahoma, and it and, and goes back to a guy like Giannis, they simply care more in Texas about winning football games, in Oklahoma about winning football games. They care more. They, they care more at, in, at Ohio State than the other teams in their area. They want to have be with a conference that cares other than Vanderbilt and, and uh, maybe Tennessee, but really Vanderbilt. I, if, if I can push at Vanderbilt and, and Missouri off to, to different conferences, I would do that. But these guys care a lot more. You know, their fan bases care a lot more. They just uh, – so you get Texas and Oklahoma as a TV product, Pickles. Can you imagine Georgia? Say, for instance, Texas is in the SEC East because they're a little bit closer. Oklahoma's in the West. So Oklahoma would have to play Alabama, LSU, Texas A&M every year. And then you can bring back Texas A&M and Texas. Texas, uh, Texas would technically be in the East. I know it would be really jacked up. Texas would be in the East. So Texas would have to play Florida, Georgia every single year. Those would be must-see TV games, guys. Texas hasn't been relevant in a while. Uh, they've got former uh, offensive coordinator for Alabama, Steve Sarkeesian. Their recruiting has been good. Their recruiting has picked up over the last couple of years. The former coach just couldn't get it done on the field. Uh, but they hung in there with a really, really good LSU team a few years ago that won the championship. They won a national championship. You know, so you you look at it from that perspective, uh, from a TV product, you, I mean, man, as far as those other teams, they'll just be like the Mac 12. There's certain teams that just don't care as much. Kansas does not care like a Texas. They don't care like an, nobody cares like an Alabama fan base, guys. You know, so I think it would be good. Uh, for a TV product that would be that much better. I know we'll have like a super conference. Then you would probably get four or five teams in from the SEC, but then you're, you're pushing up on 16 teams in this league. But it's the majority. Other than uh, Clemson and Ohio State, nobody on the West Coast really competes like this. You know, USC's been way down. Uh, Miami... Miami is somewhat coming back, but yeah, yeah, Kansas, Kentucky, and Vandy, uh, you would like to just put them off in somewhere of the conference, you know, but Kentucky's been pretty good in football. Uh, they're very fortunate to have a Mark Stoops. So anyways, uh, speaking of college football, Bobby Bowden looks like he has got a terminal illness. He hasn't disclosed it. The 91-year-old uh, football legend, 377 wins, two national championships. I'll tell you, he is a uh, – he's not the voice of college football, but Bowden, I would say, is a voice in college football. 
uh, I remember the movie The Program. It wasn't said, guys, to be about the um, FSU, the 1991 hit movie, but it it, it the, the the emblem looked like Florida State. And the team was ESU. It was it was Florida State without being talked about technically being about Florida State. And uh, talks about the ups and downs and the seriousness of big money college football. And uh, I, I just love Bobby Bowden. Uh, thoughts and prayers with the whole Bowden family, his son's coach and stuff. And uh, 91 years old, Pickles. 91 years old okay guys okay let's talk about the sec okay the sec won't let me be but it feels so empty without me of course that is from the nmm song that is no relation just thinking about it okay now alabama alabama is is not the team that I'm going to pick the, to win the West. Okay, and that, that is a big, that's a pot, that's a hot take. Uh, Thirteen and zero last year. Uh, I was telling you guys about this quarterback, Bryce Young. Bryce Young is a freshman at Alabama. Uh, already got a near seven-figure endorsement deal. Seven-figure endorsement deal. Uh, Nick Saban talked about it. Didn't mention what company. Uh, he's being compared pickles to a uh, Russell Wilson in the NFL. Now remember, they've got a new offensive coordinator. Their offensive coordinator is um, oh God, was it Brian Bill Bill O'Brien? Remember him? Brian's a good coach. Uh, he's just not a. He did a good job at Penn State. That's how he got the Houston Texans job. Uh, Bill O'Brien did a good job at a Penn State. Considering those circumstances, he did a good job there. Uh, if you're trying to get your coaching career back on track and you're a good recruiter and you coach your rear end off, you go to Nick Saban's coaching rehab. Uh, he, he, he took in Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, saw that he having alcohol problems and everything, at, uh, and that's his admittance. And that's not me making that up. Uh, at, at, at Washington, and then he, he he ended up getting fired from a USC. Saban takes him in, revitalizes his career, goes to Texas. Uh, Saban takes in fired coaches if you're a good recruiter and a good coach. He makes you a coordinator because he's always losing because he's winning at such a high level of a year. Uh, so they're, they're always going to be interesting. But they lost eight starters on offense, guys. A lot of those guys are going to be playing in the NFL, including Mac Jones, uh, Devontae Stiff, Heisman Trophy winners, guys. Najee Harris is with Pittsburgh. So I think that this team is going to lose a game. They've got on October 2nd, they got Ole Miss at home. Ole Miss team that put 40, 45 points on them last year. Excuse me. 48 points on uh, Alabama last year. Uh, October 2nd. October 9th, they play at Texas A&M, a 9-1 last year. Texas A&M, with all that defense coming back, I'm going to talk about their quarterback here in a little bit. Alabama's definitely got, now their classes were uh, for, from 19 to, th to this year, Pickles. Number one in the country ranked, which means those guys are juniors now. Uh, 2020, uh, number two, and this freshman class is number one ranked in the in the country. This quarterback is a sophomore. If you're going to beat them, you're going to beat them September, October. You're probably not going to beat them from November to the playoffs because it's just that good. The talent is that uh, at that level. I think that Texas A&M beats Alabama on Pickles October 9th. I hope that's a 2.30 Central game. So I think that they will lose that game. Uh, you know, they got Tennessee at home, and then they got a bye week. They play LSU. 
New Mexico State. See, those games get knocked out. You put Texas, you put one of them games is going to be uh, Texas or Oklahoma. And you got Arkansas then at Auburn. Auburn's got a new coach. Who knows how that's going to play? So I think that Texas A&M tags Alabama with that first loss. The next team is, what do you know? Texas A&M, all right? Texas A&M has a track star pickles coming back uh, coming in at quarterback. They were nine and one last year. Uh, J- Jimbo Fisher has won a national championship with Florida State. This team has offered him $75 million contract. He's in year four. This is the time to shine for Texas A&M. Six starters on offense, including, uh, I like this, uh, red shirt sophomore, King Hayes. King Hayes, keep that name in mind. This guy runs the 400 meter. Uh, kind of reminds me of Daniel Jones a little bit. The way he's sneaky fast, but uh, I tell you what, their home, their their key games. Of course, they've got Alabama, but they've got Alabama at home this year. Uh, where can they possibly slip up? They could possibly lose at Mississippi, and then at the very end of the season, they play LSU. I think they'll lose either at Mississippi, which is the Lane Kiffin team. Uh, which is playing really well offensively always, or lose at LSU. I think they'll beat Mississippi State at home, and they'll beat Alabama. They finally get over the hump. They beat Alabama on October the 9th, and I think they'll lose a game. It's either going to be Auburn, Mississippi, or LSU. My guess is it's not going to be Auburn because they got Auburn off of bye week pickles at home, but they've got they got to play at Mississippi – then they got Prairie View, which is nothing, you know, crappy team there. Um, few and far between on those teams. And then they got to play out LSU. LSU's got a lot of players coming back. They recruit at a high level. Okay, uh, three out of the top, uh, three out of their four classes have all been top ten. King, excuse me, King Hayes Pickles. That's this guy's name. Uh, he's being compared to Ryan Tannehill. Also played at Texas A&M. So this guy, kind of like a Ryan Tannehill. These are some of the notes. It took me all day Sunday to make this out. Alabama and Ole Miss are two key games. I think they win the SEC West Pickles, which has also got a great, uh, that's a good bet right there. It's like plus 600. It's plus 12 to win the SEC. I'm considering placing that bet through FanDuel Pickles, uh, Carlos. So I like Texas A&M to win the West. Okay, other teams of interest, LSU. Uh, Ed Orgeron, uh, bad season last year, 5-5, five and five, but they got nine starters coming back on offense and nine on defense. Only lost two starters each year. Last year, before that, they come off of a historical national championship season. Uh, there's a little bit of chaos around some allegations and some off-field issues around Ed Orgeron. I don't want to get into that right now. He's got a little bit of pressure on him because of that, but he did. Hold on, let me let me change out my let me change out my thing real quick, guys. Hold on. Uh, do, 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 stop recording, start recording. Okay, so back to LSU. LSU will be a team that, um, they got a very difficult schedule, guys. I mean, you know, they got to go on the road and play at Mississippi State, at, uh, at Kentucky, uh, Florida. Then they got to at Mississippi. Then, of course, they got to play Alabama. And then they got to end the season against LSU. I think they're probably going to be about a nine and three team. Uh, but they got this Miles Brennan guy back as a junior. Uh, but they recruit what's keeping them in the race. Uh, Reclass ranked five nationally, fifth, 19, uh, 2020's class. These sophomores, this was ranked fourth nationally. And then this past year, it was ranked three. 
That's why it's so hard to win in the, in, in the uh, SEC West. You're playing NFL guys every week, Pickles. But I, they could be – I think what it is, they will – they could run it for a Texas A&M or they could run it for an Alabama. I don't think that they're going to get to the SEC championship game this year, but they certainly uh, have the horses to do so. Uh, they've got Jake Pease, uh, P.E. Pete, as the offensive coordinator from the Carolina uh, quarterback coach. He runs the spread offense. So we'll see how all that plays out. Uh, it seems like they're constantly changing coordinators and stuff. If it ever comes down to Ed Orgeron having to do that, if it ever comes out to uh, – Ed Orgeron having to make a, a quick decision on calling plays, they are doomed, LSU. Do you, do we anticipate the ability of players to make profits off their name to be a distraction on any teams? Uh, good question, Brian. We will find that out this year. Uh, I, I, when I, I don't know if you was what, listened to me earlier talking about this guy, Bryce Young. Uh, he's being compared to Russell Wilson, seven potentially seven-figure uh, endorsement deal. There's going to be a learning curve. I think that will be an issue. I think you're going to see a lot of Lexus uh, and, and, and uh, uh, Cadillacs uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the local economies are going to do great from this. The local economies around Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and, and uh Ann Arbor, Michigan, whatever. Uh, Athens, they're going to do well because these kids are going to spend. If that was me, I would. I would go out and get me some nice jewelry. Not too much, but I would get me a nice ride. Uh, I would probably buy my girlfriend something. And there's probably going to be some distraction. But Nick Saban's not going to take any of that, you know. Uh, I, I, th I think there will be players that get suspended. There will be players that's going to get in trouble. There's going to be some issues. But I think overall, I think it's going to be okay. There's going to be some horror stories. <laughs> so my answer, the short answer is yes. How bad? I don't know. Nobody knows. Okay, so I'm talking teams of interest, guys. Lane Kiffin, second year, first year. No practically offseason, guys. Very limited any kind of training camp in the, in the college football. We had a COVID. We had an outbreak last year. We couldn't hardly do anything. And uh, this guy put his team, by the way, this Matt Corral, this quarterback, guys, he may get drafted. Uh, this quarterback out of Ole Miss may get drafted. He may be a sleeper. You heard it here first. Matt Corral. Uh, they put 45 points on Alabama last year. They beat a they beat a good pretty good Kentucky team with the thrown up together. Beat Mississippi State. This is going to be big, guys. Um, Lane Kiffin is at Missis Mississippi and Mississippi State. I think they call it the Egg Bowl. Is a highly highly in state rival, guys. Okay, Mike Leach, very good coach. Took Texas Tech team nobody ever heard anything about. Beat Oklahoma. Really good Oklahoma teams beat Oregon. He won. What did he win? Like um, I can't. I can't remember how many games he won. Mike Leach did, but the Ole Miss Mississippi State rival is going to be huge. Uh, they play Thursday. They play Thanksgiving this year, guys. That's probably going to be a night game. Probably after all those, we'll be full. We'll be indigested. That's going to be a great football game. Uh, Kiffin is. He gets a lot out of these players. Uh, somebody was asking him questions about his relationship with a cheerleader, Pickles. That's my only issue with Kiffin. Uh, he's already divorced from his wife. That is well documented. Uh, as long as he can stay out of trouble recruiting-wise, which this helps this NIL stuff and keeps his personal life engaged, they're going to score a lot of points. They're going to put out some NFL players. I talked to a friend of mine's son uh, who wants to play with Ole Miss right now. This guy's six foot three, 
and coming into high school and looks like uh, and emulates Dan Marino. He already is talking about going to Ole Miss, and he is a sophomore. The Egg Bowl. Yeah, that's going to be fun to watch. Uh, Mississippi, uh, you know, I don't know how good they're going to be, but they're going to be fun to watch. They play LSU on uh, October the 23rd. That's going to be fun to watch. They play Alabama uh, October 2nd at Alabama. Uh, That could be a potential shootout. That's why I think those Alabama kids, three only three starters returning on offense, Pickles, they're going to get a major shootout, no miss. They're going to be a tick off. They're going to go on the road to hostile Texas A&M environment, and Texas A&M knocks out Alabama. But L, uh, and, uh, Kiffin uh, sitting out pros every year, eight offense, nine defense. They're going to be a fun watch. I never thought I would say this. Fifteen years ago, Pickles, I would have never said this about Ole Miss. Even when Eli Manning played for Ole Miss, I wasn't this excited about Ole Miss football because they throw the bleeping ball all over the place. Okay, Auburn. Auburn has fired their head coach. Uh, it was ten years. Uh, you know, Gus Malzahn. You know, he he got he he beat Alabama three times. You beat Nick Saban three times. That's what kept him uh, at Auburn so long, you know. Now he's took over at uh, – he's back at uh, – oh, God, what is he at? Uh, Central Florida, a team that beat Auburn years ago. So Auburn's got this guy, Brian Harrison, now. Uh, he's come over from um, – oh, where did this guy come Boise State. Uh, his winning percentage is slightly better than Gus Malzahn. He's a former quarterback. They're going to throw the ball more. Gus Malzahn was more of a run oriented, but I liked his uh, offense. Uh, they just didn't win enough. I mean, they went six and five last year, and that wasn't good enough. Uh, they, you know, uh, got blown out by Alabama. Has just won too many times, Pickles. So now you've got this Brian Harrison guy. Uh, they do have Bo Nix returning. At quarterback, this is a pretty good. This guy's uh, they've got experienced quarterback, but I don't think they're going to do anything. I don't think they they have the number two most difficult schedule in the country. Auburn fans are going to be ticked off right off the bat. My guess is number two, uh, and they recruited nineteenth nationally. I just told you guys what the other uh, that their competition's recruiting at top five LSU, top five Texas A and M. Number one or number two, Alabama. And Auburn, poor old Auburn's brain, uh, you know, they recruit 19th. You're going to get your freaking rear end handed to you. That that doesn't count having to play Mississippi State. Uh, Well coached, Mike Leach. And, of course, Lane Kiffin, he throws the ball over the field and got NFL players on his team as well. So Auburn is – you're in for a long season. I mean, you got to play at A&M. Uh, you got to play Alabama, of course. You got to play Penn State this year. LSU, Georgia, that's murder's row right there. They got the hardest schedule in the entire conference. Uh, they'll be lucky to get to a bowl game this year. Mississippi State, going back to Mike Leach, this all got pushed under the rug last year because, or just, we didn't get talked about because of the COVID. COVID threw off everything. Mike Leach, 10-11 uh, games, some years at uh, Washington State, Never been a great recruiter, kind of a quirky personality, but Mike Leach is a guy that if you turn your back, he's coached guys pickles like Wes Welker, uh, Texas Tech uh, with their offense. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Patrick Mahomes? Now, Pat, he didn't coach Mahomes, but I'm saying that that, that throw the ball all over the place. Uh, that he he's He's the first that I see do that call that many passing plays and actually win a big game. I mean, Oklahoma's like ranked fifth. And Oklahoma's like, well, we got an easy win, and they go up to Texas Tech and just get beat, you know. Uh, He's always going to be a spoiler. He's that – Mike Leach is that coach of that team that you are looking ahead to an LSU, and you just knocked out – you knocked out Ole Miss – you got LSU in two weeks. You're at home. 
Mississippi State's got a whole bunch of injuries. Uh, and you're down by 14 late in the game. Or are you on the road? Excuse me. You go on the road to um, Mississippi State, and you and they're, they're ringing these bells all over the place, and you're down 14 deep in the game. You know, this guy won Coach of the Year, uh, 2018. Throw 77% of the time. Pickles. 77% of the time. Could you imagine the difference between Mississippi State now and Mississippi State 25 years ago? Run, run, and run to the dad takes the T-bird away. Now you've got a coach in his second year with this guy, Will Rogers Institute of a quarterback who played last year, throws the ball 77% of the time. This guy coached Michael Crabtree. He's coached Wes Welker. Uh, usually don't play a lick of defense. But I love me some Mike Leach. He's going to give you a good quote, and he's going to rub it in if he wins. And he's usually got a story that's totally irrelevant afterwards. This is why that Oklahoma and Texas want to come here. They remember him talking about the girlfriends of the quarter, uh, the players at Texas Tech, and they wouldn't ready to play. He said their little fat girlfriends tell them that he could say this now. This is only about seven or eight years ago. He said their little fat girlfriends will tell them how great they are, and they're not paying attention to game film. Their little fat girlfriends are telling them this. Their little fat girlfriends are telling them that, and they're not that good. And I'm telling them they're not that good. Now, he can't say this now. That's called fat shaming. But you're going to get a good quote leading up to the game. Uh, they got to play at AM. They got LSU at the end of the season on Thanksgiving night, Pickles. They play at Mississippi. But each, uh, and you know, this guy's going to give you, he's going to give you a good story after the game. Sometimes it don't make sense. But he is. He, he, he's like the Joker. I love me some Mike Leach. I was really excited. They only won four games last year. But um, but they're, all, they're always interesting. And one of those four games, they beat LSU. They beat LSU at the beginning of the season. LSU went in there with a bunch of new players, and they beat LSU. You know? Uh, Arkansas, uh, second-year player. This guy, Sam Pittman. Uh, who knows? They're not going to be relevant. They beat Tennessee, but uh, everybody beats Tennessee last year. They did beat this Mississippi State team. This poor guy has got uh, court to field still. They got the hardest schedule in the country. So good luck if you're an Arkansas fan. Little Rock's a fine town. Like the, uh, like, uh, what's that guy's name? Pickles. Lieutenant Dan would say. Okay, so my other notes for Georgia. Now, Georgia Georgia got talent to beat anybody in the country, including Alabama. I've picked these guys to win the national championship twice, and they let me down. And now this year, uh, uh, JT Daniels, I don't like that jersey number. I want to say he's number 13, and that's just not a lucky number, Pickles. But this quarterback – uh, he's he, he looked better towards the end. I mean, uh, last two games, 45 points South Carolina, 49 points in Missouri. And, but they got destroyed by Florida. They got destroyed by Florida. And, uh, but they out-recruit Florida every year, Pickles. Georgia's numbers here, guys. Okay, number four, uh, they had number two overall ranking class in 2019. 2020, number one class in the country. Bet this is according to 24/7, which they they take all the rec all the recruit services and they average them out. Number one class in the country in 2020 had number four. They have not been out of the top five. They're usually one, two, or five. They're right there with Alabama, or and just above Alabama. Sometimes just below 
uh, Ohio State. So the players are there. It's the quarterback, JT Daniels. I think they're good enough to get to the SEC championship. I do not think they're good enough to beat a Texas A&M or a Alabama. Uh, A offensive, five defensive. I'm not worried about their defense because they recruit so well defensively. But if this team, they just, what did they do? They've got a, this is a second year coordinator, Todd Monken system. Second year running backs. They have a favorable schedule. The schedule lines up. If they beat Clemson, they will be talked about. If they beat Clemson, they, and Pickles, they played Clemson the very first week of the season, September 4th. I think they'll beat Clemson. Uh, I, I, th- I think they'll beat Clemson. Uh, this is at Charlotte. This is a neutral site game. But I think it'll be a close game. It, it could go either way. It could, it's, it could come down to a field goal. But otherwise, uh, you know, they play their annual Florida game. They play Auburn. But I say Auburn has got a murderous schedule beforehand. They play Charleston Southern at, at, at Tennessee. Tennessee's down. They don't play Alabama in the regular season. They don't play LSU in the regular season. In the West, they play Arkansas. And it, it's it, it's favorable. It, it's fa- now, you lose to Clemson, you're probably out of that top two depending on what happens. Actually, they lose to Clemson. They'll probably be okay if they can run the table because if you win the SEC championship, you're probably going to get in. But if you beat Clemson, they're probably going to be favored in every game, double digits from what I hear. If you beat Clemson, that could be a push there. Clemson may very well, very well be. Now, remember, Clemson started a new quarterback. He got some playing time last year. He wasn't bad, their quarterback. Remember, he almost beat uh, Notre Dame. Uh, he did beat Boston College. Uh, remember, Trevor Lawrence was out a few guys. I think he had COVID or something. But either way, um, I think they beat Florida this year. Florida beat them last year. Florida's lost Cal Trash. Uh, but their, their, their classes just keep dry. Normally, Florida's got more talent than Georgia. So I think they're going to represent the East in the uh, – in the SEC. Now, as far as Florida is concerned, uh, Dan Mullen, very good coach, but he's just not the recruiter, guys. He He's just not. Um, Dan Mullen would, probably would be a better pro coach than college coach. I, I like Dan Mullen. And, 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 you know, when they were looking for a coach at uh, Dallas, I said, well, go after Dak's college guy. Go after Dan Mullen. They were number one in the country at one time. But for some reason, uh, you know, 2019, they're ninth in the country. That's great everywhere else, but not in the SEC. 2020, ninth in the country according to 24-7. This past year, they were 12th. They were in worst. Uh I know they've got uh, they've got a tight end now that is playing with the Atlanta Falcons. Cal Pitts is going to be an all world guy. Uh, this guy's a better developer than he is a recruiter. I don't know why he can't recruit better. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not to win this. He's hired to to beat Georgia and beat Alabama. That's what Dan Mullen's hired for. Uh, he's got the SEC championship last year. Uh, he got over that hump. Now, he's got this guy, Emory Jones, sophomore. He's pretty fast uh, at at quarterback. He's got got some playing time. But player for player, Georgia should beat them this year. And if they beat Georgia again, Georgia fans, you got to look at Kirby Smart. You're getting the players in. It's on you, Kirby. At some point, you got to coach them up and develop them, guys. When you're getting that kind of class, you got to get over Florida, which they have for the most part. But Florida's eight and four last year, guys. 
And they lost to LSU when I thought they shouldn't. And they put 46 on Alabama. So we'll see. I, I may be wrong. I think they're probably a two-loss team. I think they lose to Georgia. And, and of course, Florida's got to play Alabama uh, the third week of the season. And, you know, they, they'll thump Tennessee, but they got to play out Kentucky. Kentucky's beat them before. Mark Stoops has got this team ready. You know, uh, that's my next team. Uh, the thing about Kentucky fans, you don't want Mark Stoops to be too good because he'll get bought out. You know, he, he's beat Tennessee regularly. Uh, he's beat Florida a couple of times, which I couldn't believe it. First time in my life that he, that he beat Florida. Uh, they're not a threat to win the East. Uh, Stoops has been in Kentucky for nine years, though, guys. And it's a good product now. There's hardly a bad game, Pickles. If you just play the SEC, there's hardly a bad game. You know, Vanderbilt, I mean, I'm at Missouri right now. This guy, Elijah Berkowitz, uh, sounds like a Holocaust survivor. Maybe he was. Maybe his grandparents was. But... This guy, uh, he wasn't bad. You know, I was ready to trash him. I'm talking about Missouri's head coach. He, he's another guy in his second year. All these guys, you, you for, totally forgot about them because of COVID. But I want to say that they beat LSU last year. You know, they beat South Carolina. And they beat, you know, dreaded Arkansas. So this guy may be a, a diamond in a rough. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out. I don't think they're going to win the East. Again, they're more of a basketball su- school. Uh, notes on South Carolina. South Carolina's got a new coach. You remember this name, Pickles? Shane Beamer. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, it should be because it's a son of the uh, of the great Frank Beamer, Virginia Tech. Some of the best special teams in uh uh, football history, uh, you know, played for a national championship. One of the, he's the winningest coach in Virginia Tech history. His dad, uh, now Frank is forty four years old, and never technically been a coordinator, but been a tight end and associate head coach at Alabama. Has been coaching since two uh, at Oklahoma. Excuse me. So he's coming from Oklahoma, so they're probably going to throw the ball all over the place. Uh, South Carolina, they're not going to win the East. But this is Frank's, Frank Beamer's son, Pickles. Shane Beamer, 44. He's older than me. So uh, Shane Beamer uh, coming from the Oklahoma system. So they're going to throw the ball all over the place. They're going to be fun to watch. I mean, they're going to get smoked. So the East is down uh, Josh Heupel, Tennessee, very disappointed in this team. They're not taking winning seriously. Uh, they've hired that they fired Jeremy Pruitt. They hired a guy from UCF that lost three games last year, and a guy that got worse each year. This Josh Heupel for Tennessee Pickles, as the he took over for uh, Scott Frost, uh, who's on the hot seat now, but Scott Frost uh, used to be at UCF, uh, left them undefeated, University of Central Florida. Then this guy, Josh Heupel, did win a national championship as a player, uh, quarterback for the 2000 uh, Oklahoma team. You know. But, you know, the, they should have Tennessee. If you're going to fire a guy like that, if it's about money, don't fire him. If it's about money that bad, don't fire him. That's stupid. Just let him play out his contract, okay? But they should have went after Hugh Freeze, former Ole Miss coach, uh, wins everywhere he goes. Liberty coach. Liberty had a great year last year. I think they had one loss. Liberty, guys. Or Jamie Chadwell at Coastal Carolina, who was 11-1 and one last year, and they still didn't hire him. He's a Knoxville native. If you can't afford those guys, don't hire 8-3 and three Josh Heupel. Uh, my guess is they'll be lucky to win six games next year, even though they've got a favorable schedule. 
Bowling Green and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh may beat them. Well, they got Bowling Green and Tennessee Tech. And uh, South Alabama, that's three wins. Good luck getting the other three. You're no longer favorite. Maybe, maybe beat Virgin uh, uh, Vanderbilt. But I expect them to be looking for a coach in three years. Said I was gonna boycott them. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna treat them that serious because they don't. They're not that serious. Uh, the SEC East is is the SEC least, right? Uh, for instance, uh, Vanderbilt's fired their coach, of course. Derek Mason, great defensive mind. Uh, three games in 2019, didn't win a single game last year. Uh, they've hired Clark Lee, 30 young guy, pickles, young guy. Clark Lee was a defensive coordinator from um, – Clark Lee was a defensive coordinator under Brian Kelly. Now, Notre Dame, you say what you want to about Notre Dame. They took that really good uh, Georgia team to one score. They beat Clemson last year. They're putting out pros every year. They're physical. They play good defense. They block and they tackle textbook. Brian Kelly's done a good job. Now, Vanderbilt's hoping they find another James Franklin. They're hoping they uh, – James Franklin was was a, uh, a coordinator at, at Pickles at, at Maryland. I never even heard of this guy. You know, he turns out to be a star. Comes to Vanderbilt. They, they, they The trifecta beats Tennessee, uh, Georgia, Florida one year. In the same year, 2011. Tennessee, Florida, Kentucky, especially beating Florida by a comfortable margin. Uh, but Clark Lee, uh, two years defensive coordinator, he might be good at, at, at Notre Dame. But he's got a tough task, man. Uh, look who you're playing every week. Kentucky's no longer giving, uh, you know, maybe Tennessee. But Missouri's not. So we'll see how it plays out, folks. I just, uh, again, I think Texas A&M – beats Georgia to win the SEC championship. Guys, I like Texas A&M. Uh, could Alabama? Yes, of course Alabama can get there. They've, they've, they've got they've, they've, number one, number two, number one. You know, but uh, I like A&M's schedule. Uh, like Jimbo Fisher. He gets a lot out of his quarterbacks, guys. He's got four drafted that I know of. Uh, I don't want to say those guys were in the first round. I mean, you know, Winston's the only one that turned out to be halfway decent. But he, there's a reason why they gave him $75 million. He was 9-1 in the SEC last year. They beat Florida last year. Uh, hung up for Alabama with the half, but we didn't know that Alabama was going to be historically good offensively last year. They had two first-round picks and wide receiver. Uh, their quarterback went first round. The running back went first round. Offensive lineman. I mean, it was just loaded. Everything came together. And uh, but this year's the year. Fisher beats. Uh, he 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 beats uh, Nick Saban. And I think they they take that one. Lo- they get they lose to either Ole Miss or LSU. That's my prediction. And I think Georgia probably loses a game. Even if Georgia loses two. I still think they'll play for the SEC championship game, and I think A&M will beat them, and they'll get into the playoff. And maybe Alabama will probably get in, too, in the playoff and win it, uh, but we'll see. Uh, if Alabama loses two games, it's a big deal. You know, If they lose two games, guys, it's a big deal. So that's what I, I like. Hold on, let me switch out my thing here real quick one more time. That's what I like for the SEC. I like to see who's playing who off of a bye. Who'd you play pickles beforehand? Did did you, did you have to play LSU down in LSU four quarter night game, and then you got to go on the road and play Texas A and M, or you got to go on the road and play a hungry Auburn team, or Florida, Georgia. It's that second game that gets the life out of you. And if it's a third road game, you know, and you haven't had your bye week, Tennessee almost beat Alabama a few years ago because they, they had them beat for a half. 
But that was a that was a, like a third game. Tennessee come off a bye week, and Alabama uh, was was just before. Of course, Alabama's depth they they end up winning. It, you know, it just uh, Arkansas number uh, one of the worst uh, number <laughs> the number one worst schedule in, in the country. You know. One more storyline. Maria Taylor will go to NBC from ESPN. Good move, Maria Taylor. Uh, when you let something out like that, whether it was you or your agent, probably a good move to go to NBC. So, anyways, wanted to talk about that as far as the SEC. I can't wait. Uh, again, Texas A&M over Georgia in the SEC championship game, that does not mean that Alabama's not going to get there. Just may, means they won't go through the SEC championship game. In my prediction, I mean, anything can happen. We'll see what happens. If you guys like the show, share the show. Again, congratulations to the Mac and Jack show. My friends over there at the Northeast Stream and Sports got Max Kellerman uh, from ESPN. Guys, I'm in good circles here. We're going places in my show, too. Uh, I hope, uh, Carlos, you can uh, nail down that Trent Dilfer interview. I will owe you one, my friend, former NFL great. He beat my Titans there. Uh, if you guys want to contribute to the program, use the Zelle app. And uh, that you can contribute through sports, the word sports, the word S-K-O-P-E, and contribute that way. Someone's reached out to me about some kind of partnership with some sports bag and apparel. Uh, I told him to send me an email and see what the proposal is. We'll see how that works out. But anyways, have a good night, everybody. I will be back on Tuesday on Sports Scope, and who knows what will be going on by then. I may talk another conference, but I'm not going to get into the other conferences like this. The SEC is simply, uh, you've got now you've got Texas and Oklahoma wanting to come here. It just means more. They pay the coaches more. Uh, the stadiums are more crowded. Uh, there are more fist fights down here. Uh, it, it's crazy down here. But at the end of the day, Pickles, it's a fun product to watch on TV. I would recommend going to a lot of these games. They are a wreck. But, um, yeah, thank you. Tomorrow will be my birthday. Uh, like the Big 12 coach would say Mike Gundy Pickles. I'm a man. I'll be 40. Uh, if you remember, um, if you remember uh, Mike Gundy, the Oklahoma State coach, hollering at a reporter several years ago. So have a good one, everybody. I will. Uh, if you like, uh, you can see me on the Mac and Jack show, seven eight thirty a.m. Central Time on the Northeast Streaming YouTube channel or the Northeast Streaming. Uh, uh, Facebook page or the Max M A C S Sports uh, page. I'll be there. They've got Jim Jeffcoat, former Dallas Cowboy, two-time Super Bowl winner on that program as well. So those guys are doing big things. But I'll come in there and uh, we'll uh, we'll be talking about this week in sports around seven thirty a.m. Central Time. Okay, guys, I got to get me some water. I'm just about out of gas. Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you otherwise Tuesday here on Sports Scope.